Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and in this video, I'm going to share with you a script that I have been working on for A star pathfinding in Godot, specifically on tile maps. So you can see here, I've got a tile map with a character, some little grid squares, and I can pathfind uh, anywhere on this tile map. It will avoid obstacles. You can see those walls, and also, um, it will avoid empty spaces. So this is a this is a visualization of the A star grid that is created from this tile map. And you can see if I come into our board here and I add some new nodes over here, uh, maybe maybe take off some nodes right here and run the game again, that our board gets updated accordingly. And we actually can't pathfind to here. Um, so if I click over here, it won't be able to create a path to there because there's there's no way to get there. So let's actually make a way to get there. Run it again. And here we go. So now we can pathfind over there. So basically the idea behind this script is you make a tile map, you have your grid tiles on it, and then you just attach the script and it will automatically build a tile, uh, an A star grid from that tile map now this is designed for turn-based games. So if you're making like a real-time game that uses a grid, it's probably not gonna work for that. I mean, you might be able to modify it. And also it is in alpha. So it, there's there might be bugs in places. I'm going to be uploading it to Git under an MIT license. So anyone will be able to use this for free and hopefully help improve it. I'm planning on using it in my games. And yeah, I just wanted a simple way to create uh, an A star grid from a tile map because A star in Godot is very powerful. The the A star pathfinding algorithm or I guess node is very powerful in Godot, and and because it's powerful, it's kind of a pain to use because it can apply to so many different scenarios. But I need something that just applies to a grid like this, and attaching it to uh, attaching it to a tile map like this works really well for me. So let's get into this. I'm actually going to walk you through how to make a simple pro. Well, actually, let's just go into this project right here and talk about it. So here is, here is the script and all you have to do is you'll download the script and then you can just drag it and attach it to whatever tile map. Currently it's just set up to only use one tile. So you'll come into your tile set, you'll have a single tile for this tile map and you can place it. If you wanna use other tiles, then you'd make another, you'd make a different tile map. Um, but you could possibly modify the script as well to make it work with multiple tiles. I just, well, this will work with multiple tiles. You can have variation in these tiles, but it will create a pathfinding point on every single tile. So keep that in mind, okay? So you just drag it, attach the script, and then in my world function right here, I am, so it also comes with an A star debug, which is just that visualization that you saw right here. Um, it just, this is for debugging purposes if you're, if you're, running your game you can uh and you're not sure if the tile map is working properly you can run this a star debug or you can just put this node in the scene and attach this script to it and it will just well you have to you have to tell it uh you have to set the board so whatever tile map you're using you'll have to pass that into the a star debug but but you can see I'm doing that here in the world scene. So let's come up into the world scene. And right here, all I'm doing in the ready function is just saying a star debug, which is just this node here, uh, dot board equals board. And we're getting the board right here. And again, the board is just a tile map that I've attached the script to, the a star tile map script, this script right here. Okay, and then I have some other things here. Um, this and this don't actually really matter. Uh, so we can remove those for now because they don't actually matter. And we'll just hide the A star debug. So what matters here? All that matters is the left pressed event. Um, and so when I, when I click left in here, it will try and find a path to that point, right? So how does it do that? Well, it, uh, 
we get the target cell and I'm just, I'm just getting the corner of the cell. So you can see, oops, let's come into 2D here. You can see the cell corner is right here on the exact, um, that's gonna be the position of the cell. And so we want to be able to calculate that point no matter where we click in the cell. So I'm using this right here. I'm taking the mouse's position and dividing it by the board's cell size and then flooring it and then multiplying it by the board dot cell size again. And that just takes that point and snaps it to the top left corner of the grid. So it's just some math to take whatever the mouse position is and snap it to the top left corner of the grid. Then we call board dot get a star path avoiding obstacles. So what this does is it gets a path from two points. So this is the first point. And then this is the target point, which is where we clicked. And it returns those points. And it's an array of vectors. So you're going to get back a list of vectors. And this, of, this avoids obstacles, because you can actually get a path that doesn't avoid obstacles, that goes through obstacles. So if we just do get a star path, I think. I haven't tested this, so watch. It's going to break now, because we're live. Yeah, you can see that avoids the empty space, but um, will go through obstacles. It doesn't avoid obstacles. Okay, and um, so we get, the, we get that list of points, and then I have just a line here, a line node, and I'm just, that's blue, and I'm just setting, okay, so I'm setting the position of the line by half the cell size, because if you don't do this right here, then your, your path is going to be from the corner, right? The top left corner of here, corners all the way to here. So this is just, I'm moving the line to account for the offset and make it centered is all. And then I just set the lines points equal to path points because this is also a list of, uh, this is also an array of vectors. So then it just updates the line and draws the path. It's really easy. So you can see how easy it is to get uh, to get a path to a point. And we literally don't have to do anything to generate those points. The board will just use the, this, this A star grid will just use the cells that you pass it, uh, the different tiles to generate an A star map. Now, how does it avoid obstacles? Because if you see when we turn on A star debug, right here, it is avoiding these obstacles. It's not generating, uh, it's not generating a path through those obstacles. Um, and actually, technically, it is generating a path through those obstacles. They're just not visualized because uh, our, our debugger doesn't show them. That's how we can get a path through obstacles if we want. But how does it avoid obstacles? Well, it's set up to look for any node that has a certain group attached to it. Um, so if we have this wall, well, any of our walls right here, you can see when we go into node and we go into groups that it's, uh, oh, I added the sprite um, instead of the base node, but it doesn't actually matter. Uh, you can add, basically it uses the position. So it doesn't matter which it's attached to as long as the position is the same. It's using this position and saying, okay, at this position, there is an obstacle. So if you put the group obstacles on here, on either one of these, then the engine or the, the script will automatically avoid those obstacles when it's doing pathfinding. Uh, there's also a unit class or a unit group. So if we come into our player, you can see our player is in the units group. Now, what's the difference between the units group and the obstacles group? Because uh, you can uh, it it can you can have it avoid units and obstacles as well. So there's a, there's a function inside of the script. So we we already saw um, we already saw get a star path, and we saw get a star path avoiding obstacles. Now we also have get a star path avoiding obstacles and units. And these functions allow you to set also a max distance uh, if you want it to try and get a path, but it can only go so many so far. And it allows you to add exception units too. 
Um, cause that can be useful to avoid, uh, like a lot of the time you'll want to add yourself as an exception unit so that you're not blocking your own way essentially, or potentially a target unit. You want to add it as an exception unit, because if it's not, then it will return no path. But yeah, um, what's the difference between an obstacle and a unit? Well, in theory, there's no difference, but in, in practice, um, what happens is an obstacle may move but is unlikely to move, right? So like maybe your game allows you to push units or push obstacles around. Um, it could move, but it's unlikely to move. So when your AI is getting a path to the player, it doesn't want to assume that an obstacle is going to move out of its way. It wants to assume that the obstacle is likely going to be there on the next turn. However, with other units, it might assume that that unit is gone. And so, uh, on the next turn. So it might move along a path assuming that um, that path is going to open up when the unit in the way moves out of the way, essentially. So that's the main difference between the two. So one thing you can do as well is you could create a... Well, uh, let's show this real quick. So uh, we have our scene here. Now I can actually grab... Um, I'm going to grab this wall and I'm going to move it. Now that scene change should actually update. And if we come back into here, you can see that the wall is now moved and the grid has now updated and I can now move to that space. So I could actually move a wall um, in the way and block a path. So let's say we can go here right now, right? But I could come into here and I could move this wall. And then when we run, when we come back into the game, I can no longer get a path to there because we've blocked off that path. So you can see, the script um, uses the group of obstacles to automatically update the, the grid. And so if you have a unit moving on your grid, for example, then the script will just automatically update it. You don't have to tell the script that that unit has moved. It will know it using that group, the units group and the obstacles group. So it's quite powerful. And I want to show you real quick, this is what we'll do. I'll actually just open up the tactics project that I've been working on real quick and show you. Um, I'm using this exact same script for this game, okay? So uh, let's kill this bat real quick. Um, and then we'll move, I don't know, say, let's move over here just to make things interesting. Well, actually, we'll use telekinesis on this and push it back. Okay, so now we can end the turn and you can see we've got our units here. And if I come over here, I'm using the exact same A star grid uh, debug. So, oh, I have to go into remote and make it visible. Come on, where are you? Oh, it should be in. Um... I want to show it with the with the debug on, but maybe maybe I have debug not showing. Okay, here we go. Let's come here. We'll kick the bat, and then fireball it, and then use telekinesis again to move this unit over here. I guess, and you can watch the grid update in real time the path that. Um, you can potentially follow. So let's move over here. We'll kick this rat into that rock and then maybe bite it. And then, and then we're out of mana. So then it can move. And yeah, so you get the idea. I'm using this in this project right here. All of the functions on that script are the same. I'm using a lot of the functions. There's functions for flood filling like this. I'm returning potential points. Um, using flood fill. It's a little bit complicated and there's no documentation for this right now. Obviously this video is the documentation, but I'm just, I've been working on this for a while and I was really excited to share it with you all. And so I thought I'd put it on GitHub, allow other people to use it, start to find the places where I can iron out the issues with it, or maybe other people can help me iron out issues with it as well and get this out for people to start using. Cause I think this script can be really useful for people who want to make turn-based games like this that uh but but using a star is a big pain for them then it will um make that significantly easier give them a tool that they can use 
to uh, do it quickly and easily. So hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, be sure and give it a like, comment down below if you have any questions about this for me. I also did wanna give a shout out to all of the backers on my Indiegogo campaign for my book. I'm writing a book about making or planning and finishing games called Production Point. Um, we're currently at 16,000. Um, so we've already hit our goal. We hit our goal in five days. Um, I'm looking to try and get to 25,000 because that will help me to uh, produce an audiobook so I can get some uh, pay for my recording time and at a, at a soundproof studio here and then uh, for the work that's required to actually go through, record it, and edit the, the audiobook. So I'd like to get that audiobook. It is a stretch goal. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the pinned comment below. You can check out the Indiegogo campaign. And I will talk to you all later.